can't believe it's August. The August 8th meeting. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you hear us? Okay. So, yeah, I can. Yeah. And I just have to do star six to unmute, I guess. Right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then how do I mute myself back? I just don't want you to hear the car noise. It's probably annoying. Are you, you're on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, just your mute would do it. My mute? Okay. Come on, you must know where the mute is. Recording in progress. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, we don't have to welcome anybody. <laughs> it's like no, nobody looks on me. There's Green Mountain. Who's on? Oh, that's me. That's, that's messy. I was just as wait. <laughs> Isn't it you? <laughs> oh, who's that? Goodness. You have a car now? Yeah, but the band is still held up. Yeah, it's been a running game. Uh, let's see. Any changes to the agenda or? Anything? I don't think so. Okay, updates to the to our exciting. We got so excited, saw those big plastic culverts out there. I said it's going to be a miracle. It'll be done immediately. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> nah. The worst of it's to come. <laughs> so, who's wants to? Ron, you want to give us an update? Yeah, the uh, just plugging along. Yeah, let's go back to the storm event, which is 4720, which is still evolving. Uh, claims under that event have to be made within 60 days. So we have until September 14th or so to file any claims. After that, they don't count. <laughs> so people won't recognize those. The new claims we have had are uh, two landslides that we're watching and the uh, yep, yeah, and the final uh, resolution of damage. So what I mean by that is that we have a 10, 10 sites or whatever scattered around town. Some of those are still being evaluated by either Watershed or Chris mm -hmm. and Mel for the state. And eventually they'll have a resolution at a real cost. Uh, and that's the cost for the emergency repairs temporary repairs, and then maybe some get spun out to the long-term permanent. We're not sure yet. Garfield Road at Collins Pond might be one of those bigger projects that has got to be bid and go through mitigation because it's an upgrade to that project from what was there before, for example. Diggins Road, class four roads aren't eligible except for the emergency response phase, putting the road lanes back to where they were before. Mark has some ideas for some big, big stone up there that is a more of an upgrade. Whether or not FEMA approves that or not, I'm not sure. We'd have to petition them because it's not a class three. That's part of the problem with plowing class fours. You still want you still have the access, but you don't have any of the grants. Right. Uh, Mark and I talked about lowering the fire pond down to the bottom of the hill next to Jim Fontaine. So you still have a fire pond on Dickens Road, but you only plowed a Jim Fontaine's driveway, which is the end of the class three, you know, just to try to get off that hill. Uh, other ideas are to upgrade the road and get out of there and discontinue the whole thing. And we'll build a fire pond on McKinstry Hill where it's better access and there's water down there too. So anyway, those are, and, and I, Morristown Select Board met last night and they have a policy, which I didn't even know about. Every five years, they revisit all their roads and it's sort of like a refresher for the new boards almost to come in and say, uh, you guys are plowing this driveway. Did you know that? So they kind of audit themselves every five years by policy. And that's sort of what Mark and I have been doing about these, either the high cost roads, repeat damage roads, uh, driveways to one house that plows there. Uh, certainly the class four roads that we plow are in that category. Uh, so anyway, the, the damages that we're seeing and we're getting approved for reimbursement or not are part of what we're doing now, but along with trying to figure out what the cost was. So we haven't been, a, we, we submitted last week the um, 
RPA, which is a, the first step for requesting public assistance under FEMA. So all the money that's from the storm event is called public assistance or PA grants. You'll hear things in the radio about IA, which is individual assistance grants under FEMA. You'll probably hear more about SBA loans, which are for private owners, businesses to help uh, $40,000 per homeowner to get um, started on repairs. And that's uh, no no payments, no interest for a year. And then the payments started. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the people that will get that money for their houses has to be the flood. It don't have to, it's not coming from groundwater, right? Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard that yet. I think that the incident is flooding right. in general. That's That's what I was... We have about a dozen to 15 homeowners that were not flooded, but called 211. Right. right. Okay. Those people have high groundwater problems generally. And then some pumps quit. And I don't think, I think they're probably getting denied by FEMA, but there may be other resources. Community mm -hmm. groups are trying to help people. There's a team from South Carolina that's up here trying to help people clean up houses. So there's other ways that they can get it clean up. The rebuilding part is the sort of the cost costly part. Um, I haven't I haven't run through enough scenarios to know what happens to a person out of the flood zone that was damaged by a flooded basement. Yeah, because one person called their insurance company, and the insurance company denied her. Oh yeah. So I checked in. I had my wife check in, make sure that our insurance if something happened. Yeah like that if it would cover and she said yes it does depends on your policy yes yeah. <clears throat> yeah. and that's what and fema does the same thing like if we don't have any structures buildings but they'd have us get the denial letter from vlct first before they would consider the fema reimbursement because that's you're supposed to use your personal insurance or the town insurance first then they backfill if there if, if there's even a program for that yeah so anyway, that's what's going on between the storm and this list, the Centerville and Brook Road contract is signed. So we have October 15th as a due date for Centerville and September 1st, 24 for Brook Road, if they can't get it done this year. So if you cross your fingers, maybe they'll get both done. But I think both pipes have been ordered. So if the planets align and the rain stops, it might happen. Right. Um, Be lucky to get the pipe. Yep. So if the pipe doesn't come soon, and then that whole thing would have to be pushed, which means all our permits have to be updated to 24 because they all expire in 23. So Watershed Consulting is overseeing the project and working with DeRosha directly. <clears throat> so they'll be the onset. Mark won't be doing that. Um, Watershed Consulting will be doing that for the town. And they'll, they'll coordinate those kind of big issues. <laughs> okay, we're not going to hit our October date. What do we do with these permits and so on? Uh, wetlands permits, Army Corps permit, and stream alteration permit are the three big ones. Uh, yeah, and they know that the, the Centerville's got to be done. Yeah, it's all been pretty clear to them yeah, that it's got to be done, you know, so. <laughs> if we work through the winter, we work through the winter, it's like, you know, well, time will tell. So not a lot for updating, but eventually we'll get a new updated cost sheet. We're, we just don't have enough information back from the people that were looking at the sites to update that original preliminary damage assessment. It's only going to go higher. I mean, we had um, surprise. <laughs> well, we didn't. The two landslides were just added, which we we Brook Road and Garfield Road, which are really hard to assess because they, they go down so far that you don't exactly know where it stops. I didn't even notice. I walked yesterday and I didn't even notice it. Yeah, and then if you know you need to look down a hole that's 20 feet and it looks like the bottom, but we can't tell how far along our there's all that not weed there. Coming. Yep, not weed is softened up the ground. Yep, uh, the Brook Road one looks like it jumped the bank on uh, lower Brook, Brook Road, which is uh, it's 500 feet up from Cleveland Corners, and it is a little oxbow of the river just kind of jumped okay. and then kept hitting the road. So the road right away is about where the erosion stopped but after that it goes straight down about 10 feet so mark and i were looking at that today saying it's sort of out of the right of way do we just let mother nature deal with the rest of that or do we want to go get you know permission from that landowner to go down and start the 
you start at the bottom with your retaining well, you can't just add rock to the top. The top right. You know what's going to happen if we don't do something about that. Well, it's going to get worse every time the water comes in. Now, was that water unusual there? I don't know. It, it may not have been unusual. So it's every storm or is it every fifth storm? It's hard to gauge, but right now it's totally exposed. It's really hard to see with vegetation. When the when the fall comes, we'll probably get more. Those are going to be on those will be on us at that because we'll be out of the FEMA zone. So I know the day is September 14th. Report to be made by the storm event for 720. Any other dates I need to know in here? Did you mention a couple? Uh, well, September 1st, 24 is the is the deadline for Brook Road if they can't finish it in 20 right. this year. Yeah. October 15th is the Centerville deadline. 23. Then we have 60 days to report claims, which ends uh, yeah, maybe that's the September 14th is the FEMA claim date ends on September 14th, which is 60 days after the uh, presidential declaration of July 14th. Okay. So that's that. No good news, no terrible news. To yeah, just, <laughs> and we made it, you know, from a, from a town wide yeah, network, yeah, we made it okay compared to a lot, lot better off than other people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So. And if we had Brook Road and Centerville done, we'd be like, that wasn't so bad at all. So you can, when you think about yeah, these new right. cohorts going in. Yeah, yeah. And if we could solve Diggins Road somehow, either by giving it up or fixing it permanently, yeah. uh, we'd be really, I mean, overall, we'd be in good shape because those are repeat spots all the time. Yes. And we're not really having any a lot of new spots except this landslide stuff, which happens. Trouble, trouble is digging Road. There's nowhere to get the water out into the woods coming down through there. It wants to use the road. Huh? Yeah. It wants to use the road. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the banks are like this. Yeah. Yeah. And I really looked at that and see if we could get something out through there. And there's nothing we can do. There's one cutout up on top. But then when the water goes through that cutout going up on the right, it comes right back around and goes <laughs> back into the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We met with Watershed up there. And <clears throat> one of the ideas is to um, take. From the top of the hill, where you take the right to go to the pond, yeah. fire pond, from that corner down to Tyler's driveway, 501, is to put that underground because it has nowhere to go. So if, if water doesn't have a place to go, you, you want to drop it. Can you imagine how big of a culvert you're going to have to have? Well, this, that's the light. The, the 501 park takes another stream from the south side of the road. So you get a doubling up at that point. That first part is. A, terrible but it's it's not prepared for water this heavy water so it erodes every time that top right, part yeah so but that's not cheap stuff either <laughs> i don't know so that's enough on that and there's no place to yeah dig a sediment pond up there no we'd have to we'd have to use tyler's front yard i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that well Okay, <laughs> the um, the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. Hey, just so they hold, they've got bunches of it have already been fixed and opened. So, yeah, we have the corridor is so, yeah. And now it's hopefully by the end of next year, the things that have to be the major things that have to be fixed, they ought to have fixed. So, yeah. It's good. Yeah, this is the uh, accelerated project. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting yesterday with the engineer, which is VHB. Uh, VHB is uh, the main engineering firm for the whole trip. Yeah. So they're perfectly able to sit down and take care of this one site. We also talked with them briefly about a uh, really high level, quick preliminary look at a spur to connect from the trail to Lamoille Valley, Lamoille Chevy and the beer. Right. And they said that they would do that outside of the grant, but it would be easy for them to do to at least recognize it and put that on as a project. As a project. Yeah. So you identify it, get, yeah. don't draw it through wetlands. You know, they'll spend enough time to make it relatively feasible. Yeah. And then it's negotiating back with VTrans to get access. And that's right. that's a long process there. Right. But if you don't have an, a concept, they're not going to talk to you at all. Okay. And it does connect with a proposed East Main Street 
path that we have already done from 2016, widen the shoulder. That's going to come up on the right and then cross row. The sidewalk? Yeah. Oh, I hope see, right. it's going to the hill. Right. I can't remember which side it is. Because on the north side of the road, because the south side has the drop off. Right. Around just, that corner, and then down through. Right. Then there's a constraint at the bridge. You're talking about East Main Street. Oh, it's going to go down that way. It's not going to go down towards. No, there's. Well, we're talking about a spur from the trail through the backwoods. You know where the house is up behind the oil Chevy? There's a couple houses that are up on the back hill. Yeah, good ones. Yep. Bruce Bryce Goodwins. Yeah. Comes across his driveway down lower, not near his house, but just a little bit lower. And then it cuts across where they put all that fill material to get to the beer resource place. That's but the fine walk, right? But the grade is the grade is you know pretty consistent from the Morristown town line down to the East Main Street. And who's gonna maintain that? It would be maintained the same way as the rail trail is. So snow would be, be snowmobiles get to go in there. And so it would be the state that's going to. That's if they accept it. Some, I asked uh, Chris Hunt, who's a V-Trans trail type person for all the grant money. And he said they all have all sorts of agreements for the maintenance. Some private, like the commercial people tend to do it because they want yeah, to get to the commercial. Yeah. So they pay for the maintenance of that thing to get it there, or there's a town state partnership. You know, there's he, he mentioned two or three different ways to deal with the maintenance once it's built. But I think the grant money is there to build it. It's always the question of who maintains it and what kind of organization does it, taxpayer or not, all that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, you're not getting volunteers anymore, like you get oh, yeah. use right? Yeah, we've been talking about that problem too. It, it, no, it's no, yeah, I mean, even, even you know, I even mean for all the boards <clears> we haven't they were they were they were talking about Marshall, what kind of a <clears throat> job if you remember a couple of years ago they'd done with their roundabout. Have you paid attention to that roundabout over there? No, yeah. Oh, yeah. They lost everybody for the same reason they lost us. They got sumac growing in theirs. Yeah. Well, you know, it's pretty certain times of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural. No, but and they, pretty soon it'll all be not they, anywhere. There was some people taking care of that. Oh, they yeah, no, I saw they got the yeah. did a nice job. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, in the last couple of years, I noticed things ain't happening. Yeah. Well, that's who else? What was the name of but, the group? But anyway, what we need to do is to uh, VHB. This is, and we're using our, uh, for this, somebody's really going to be nice down there. <laughs> the Lamoille Valley you, will get reopened again. Chastity. It'll be great. Yeah, Chastity, we're using our sidewalk for our match. Um, so I didn't know about this little spur off. Have we talked about this before? Uh, no, no, that's I a different thing. That's just a, we might get it in someday. That isn't anything. Oh, but the rail trail, but the rail trail, Pete? The rail trail is for the, for the spur to go to the, to, to, uh, ten bends. to 10 bends, right. right? I got stuck at Lost Nation yeah. with 10 bends. Yeah, no, we haven't. I mean, that's sort of, we've never formally talked about that, but everybody thinks someday. Oh, we'll be a, that would be amazing. Right. What? Yeah. <laughs> you can see. I think it's pretty pretty easy to get the ten bends people to support taking care of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right across the road, seventy five feet. <laughs> it's um, but this on on three is about the you know, getting the uh, at the trailhead, getting it all spruced up and yep. looking really nice. And we just need yep. to uh, to authorize Ron to. Uh, I guess you're going to sign for it, right? It's a grant agreement, yeah, so, right? A yep. grant agreement, and we're using our, uh, we're using yeah. uh, again. I think part of this is, you know, they found a project that's pretty ready to go. They've got a bunch of money getting things done, and and again, it's so crushing that the there the trail was almost open completely, and then we get this flooding. But anyway, they, you know, to get it done, so we're at this site's in a situation to take advantage of it. So. I'll make a motion to authorize Ron to sign the grant agreement um, for the amount of four hundred fifty two thousand six hundred fourteen, and then the rest of the money come from the reserve fund. 
There's a lot of mystery. Yes, there's such funny numbers. Second. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody, aye. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Hey, reappraisal order. Guess what? I don't think there's a town in the state that must be in compliance with reappraisal right now. <laughs> So what they tell us, Ron? Oh, they just basically said you have 30 days to let us know if you're going to fight us or not. That's the first time frame. Uh, or we're going to consent and start to plan for reappraisal. After that, you have, uh, I think it's 120 days to submit an official plan, which is written with the state and, a, and under their guideline. You know, they, they have certain standards to meet. They, they're going to do it one way or another. The length of time it takes to get a reappraisal firm that's qualified to do reappraisals in Vermont is, is plus three years, according to Terry Sabins, who's our assistant or second uh, assessor. And that'll be that should be enough time for us to keep putting money away in the reserve to get the money we need. We couldn't we couldn't afford it today because it's been so close to 2018. But in three years, we should be close again, as long as the prices don't go through the roof, which you never know. It's about 150000 plus or minus for reappraisal. Right. As I say, this first letter that they've sent us is we go, uh-huh. So we let them know that we've gotten the telly we need to do it. And then we've got in our appraisal plan will be as soon as we can hire a qualified appraiser, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of all you can There's do. There's no sense of playing them. No, 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 but they give you that chance because you know some towns are um, have, have just want to explore that option. I don't know. I don't think it would end up any better for them, but sometimes they might want to appeal it and say, you know, for some technical reason, but not. I don't think we have a reason to do it. Not really. Uh, Deanna had mentioned um, that maybe by next year it'll level out a little bit, so we could potentially discuss that with them, but. I think we're on board with. Oh yeah, that we need to reappraise and sort of we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, because it's three years, so yeah, it's going to be right. Who knows? Who knows what things will look like in a year? Never mind three years. So it's like 2008 again. Yeah, here's our. Here will be our plan. So this is all run by the select board. So Susan will write a note or sign a form saying we yes we do intend and we'll get back to you on the plan. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you need to do. So authorize Susan to respond to the state yeah, with a motion, yeah. affirmative response. You okay. just need a motion for Susan to yeah. sign the paper for yeah. the <clears throat> review so, of so yeah. And yeah. Yeah, we're gonna comply. We'll rephrase. Second. Give me a second. Oh, I thought you made the okay. Yes, I'll second. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were still making the motion. I was like, <laughs> It's a, whatever. All in favor signify by saying aye. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's right. Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. 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 You guys, everybody, the the it's in the packet. I mm -hmm. read it online. Yeah. It really is a. Um, it's great having all the information about that building. Um, it's it's um, it's nice to have that. You know, it's a nice history of the building and uh, and a good evaluation of the structure and and everything that's been done. And the, yeah, again, it's the history of it and everything else. It's really a. Uh, um, it's it's a nice thing to have. We're going to somehow or other let that probably should go and uh, maybe do part of it separately or something. Thinking at town meeting, that would be a great thing or to refer folks where we have it. Get people that are interested in the building to be able to go read it because it really is. I think it's there, interesting. There's there was a little poster I think that the GVH committee was doing to show the history of all the improvements. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you can ask them to do a display board or something. There. Yeah, because there is a lot of history. Where taxpayers have put money into that building, that they almost could do a timeline to refresh yeah. everybody's memory, yeah. Yeah. including this one. And you know, they're still asking for money on 
heat systems and things. Right. I think they, I'd totally be into doing that. So I guess we missed because uh, Al is the chair and they just in, uh, in read, read the report, review it, and if it's accurate. To, uh, to sign it, it, it's called a baseline document. So that anything that's done from here forward, they'll have all that. The work is now all in one place that can be referred back to, which should be really helpful for them applying for grants and that sort of thing as well. So moved. Great. I'll see she has to unmute. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I did say aye in there. Yeah, yeah it takes it a second when I'm trying to unmute. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. I was just saying that. <laughs> Sorry. Hard. Okay. The town facility use policy. Through that too. Pretty straightforward. The GVH committee wants a little more control on the fees and things that they charge. So it's kind of sort of reverse. They'll adopt the fees and let us know what they are. And then uh, they change the goal. Grand Grange Hall references to Guy and Valley Hall. Pretty minor, but they were getting yeah, stuck on some of those funny. things. Yeah. I, I can talk about it. I find a I have make a motion to approve the amendments. Second. Okay. Okay. And Liz, Liz did send an email saying that that was the strike version was representative of what their concerns were. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay. <laughs> we're good. Okay. Ooh. The uh, not surprisingly. The uh, folks up there did a survey to see if we should spend more money on the building. And uh, amazingly, the results came back that people thought we should spend more money on the building. <laughs> well, okay, I can, I can do that. <clears throat> it's never hard to spend other people. Well, it's often not hard to spend other people's money. <clears throat> And we don't really, it's just, you know, they sent that information to us. Um, I heard, I haven't, I haven't checked to see if the, uh, the building that they were, that they've asked the town to purchase, I heard that it was under contract and I, I haven't, I haven't bothered to check to see if that's so, but um, yeah, we know anybody that buys that is going to be an expensive piece of property to clean up. So we'll just we'll we'll put there we'll add to the to the ARPA wish list the things that folks up there would like to see us would like to see us do. Let's see, we have errors. We have errors and omissions. Okay, who wants to tell us about the errors and omissions? I we can do that. I think I always think that's such a great thing to call them. I, mean, I feel there are parts of my life that I should go with. It was an error in the mission. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I don't know. I don't know. I'll find it. It's in there. Oh, it's about halfway through the back. Oh, you can read it so well. Was it? Yes, yeah. So, it's almost perfect. I don't hear that. I saw it in the actual form. I mean, it's just being numbered. There's two form. Okay. So the first one you said. You don't page numbers yes. where we did all these because if I was I want to the text, that's why they look good. <laughs> <laughs> so the first two, the kings, they um purchased property and they had bought, and we didn't combine them with the grand list. So that was the error on them. 
um, or maybe they had a they changed the name on the deed, so that made it so they could be adjoining properties. Um, H.A. Menage, they submitted a survey, and that survey indicated 0.52 acres was a change on one of the parcels and on another as well, and we didn't make that change in the grand list. So that changes from 25.20 to 23, and then the other one, I can't quite read it here, but yep. The clear same thing with the adjoining parcels. We didn't add them together when they purchased. Yes. And same for Riddle. They purchased up on Diggins Road. And then they're yeah. combined. Yep. So three combines and one acreage change. Nothing too terribly drastic. I say there isn't that much of a change in evaluation then since that. So that's say so you see that right? 25 acres. 23, yeah, uh, 25 point two to 23. Right? 23? Yeah, 23, yeah. 25.2 to 23. Negative. Huh? Negative. 2800. Hmm. I guess we need a motion to accept the errors and omissions. Make a motion to set the errors. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. aye. Anybody abstaining? Okay, don't worry, we'll get to the exciting stuff somewhere along the line here. <laughs> 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 nice. We like these nice quiet nights. Okay. Um, right. Okay, the, the interlocker assessor. <laughs> Some of you may remember that at one point we had no board of listers, and at another point we had need to hire an assessor. And Johnson was in the same position. We decided to share one person, two in the beginning, one trainer, one um, learner. And the concept was three or more towns to share and try to create a full-time position with benefits. We had a few towns interested, though, and only two survived to the actual interlocal agreement. Everybody else was like, well, you know, maybe when you get this thing going, improve it a little bit, and maybe when you have a certified assessor, we'll talk to you again. So Johnson and Hyde Park kind of took the leap of faith a little bit with uh, Terry Sabins and Justin to sort of make it happen. And that's right. we're at a good spot right now. Justin can fill you in on his training. Uh, and St. George voted to join the two towns. So there'd be three towns. Uh, a couple of the towns are, we probably do outreach again now that we're more developed, especially if we can go and say we have a three town agreement and we have certified assessor that might change it for people. Cause right. you know, we've been operating since who was it? February, March? March 8th, the my official first day. So, you know, that's one of the things that is a proof of concept at some point. You know, six months in, everybody's still happy. Why don't you give an update on where you're at on your training? So I should be level one certified now. I've taken the listers training course. Um, there's a little back and forth with the state about the credibility of that, but I was there, so we'll work that out. Um, so I should be level one for that. The Hyde Park brand list is complete, as you've seen with the tax rate and so on. So I'm Feeling pretty confident with my abilities there. We work on current use, not as confident on that. But um, Thursday, Tara and I can sit down together, do a little bit more. Um, we're updating the maps. I have an appointment with CAI on Thursday at one o'clock. So we'll do some training and 
hopefully within a few months, you'll have our maps to be current and people can get our information like they should be able to on the website. Um, Excellent. Same thing basically for Johnson too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you are fairly far behind, right? Yeah, when I got on board, we we're back there to November, yeah. and I found some things like a check that wasn't cashed from last June. Yeah. So, yeah, we're recording <laughs> and a few different. <laughs> yeah, apparently our cables and utilities they weren't updated for a couple of years. So when we saw the million dollar change, we're like, why is that so drastic? But it's because it hadn't been updated. Yeah. Yep. Um, as far as my positions go, I'm. Assessor for here, Johnson and St. George. Um, the you guys are doing work, obviously. Hi again. Um, Thinkman Tax Collector for St. George. I'm their assistant to the boards and their assistant town clerk and 911 coordinator. And kind of mixing all those together, the work life, home life balance is almost perfect at this point. Ah, all right. <laughs> so I have an overnight job that I do a couple days a week. So I'm able to do town work while I'm at that job. So I have three days off in a row, plus a fourth kind of bonus day. So it's compacted pretty well, but it's a nice balance. Yeah, that's great. How many how many levels of assessors are there? Four. Four, okay. Yeah, you have to be level four to do reappraisals. Okay. Is that your goal? No. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, say yes, but, you know he would then be a millionaire <laughs> with uh, the amount of testing that goes into that i mean maybe if we you have to wait about two years two to three years pending to gain another level okay so maybe in 10 or 15 years i'll feel more confident well, that's true. yeah that's true sure so, well, you've done a lot of that okay but for level one i didn't have to take a test so i don't not that i don't think i could pass but i just you know Oh so I was never a good test taker, I, nope. you know, and some people are brilliant at taking tests and others are, I'm just, oh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard that they, they do um, verbal yeah. tests. Those are available oh, too. Oh, interesting. Okay. They do the okay. Yeah. For rest of the year. Yep. <laughs> okay. This is listed as a possible action item uh, only because we have a uh, need for an agreement. To, to reflect St. George. So Johnson and St. George of select boards have all voted is sort of in concept because they haven't seen the final adjusted agreement either. Uh, the first agreement's written for Johnson and Hyde Park. And there's one line in there that says this can be used for additional towns because that was one of the intentions. Right, right. But I think that we're still gonna talk about this uh, with Johnson and then get a, uh, revised draft of St. George, but the concept is as towns join the interlocal agreement, we would come up with an amended interlocal agreement. So it was all three right. boards would sign a new agreement, basically. Right. And it's, so we have to agree to let somebody else in. Yeah, so the, per, the core towns that are already in would say, yes, let's do it. Let's send this new person a, a new contract to see if they have any changes. And if they don't, they sign it. And then the other two boards sign it and we're done. So that's the that's the approach. Uh, I did ask for a meeting with Duncan Hastings and Johnson and Susan to look at that amended agreement. If it all gets approved and it looks good, then we'll send it over to St. George to see if they have any edits. They may decide to sign it as is, and then that would come back to you guys for your final approval. The edits really are only two things, putting St. George in with the two other towns where it says the other two towns, Johnson continuing to be the employer, and both towns, Hyde Park and St. George, paying $25 a pay period for the processing of all the payroll stuff. So that's and that 25 was the same as it is now. So Johnson wanted to keep the same 25. Okay. So how, how did um, the town clerk's office, did, did they lose, I mean, I know they lost equipment and stuff, but were the records and everything all right? They lost one book, um, volume 14. The most rest of it was saved um, besides the you know, technology equipment. Right. Okay. Um, the bottom drawer of the assessor filing cabinets were lost, but there wasn't anything really valuable in there. Okay. 
Yeah, but downstairs is just about destroyed though. Wow. <laughs> they cut out about three feet up, maybe on the sheetrock. Yeah. All the way around everywhere downstairs. Yeah, the interesting thing about Johnson was they knew they were in the flood area when they built that in 2011, maybe 10, 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they took the base flood elevation at that time. I think it was based on 1984 FEMA information. And they built one foot above that. So that first floor that he was just describing that, that washed up was one foot above the 100-year flood zone. And if they had used the new standard two feet, which is the new federal standard, that eight inches that came up in the first floor would have been covered by that because hmm. it, it was over two feet higher than the base flood. So they would have, if they had built to that, they would have been above the flood zone. <clears throat> Just a, it's, and, and they had other things done too. They really uh, thought of flooding. How far did the fire station get with that? Fire station about the same is by foot, a foot of water in there. So they did the same. They gutted it. They they left equipment on the ground though. That was one of the problems they made. They left, you know, how you get your jump gear and it's all ready to go. That stuff was still apparently on the on the ground yeah, when the water came up. Plant. But the what the wastewater plant is sort of oh. interesting. If you saw the pictures there, they actually had flood proofing yeah. to, to deal with four feet of water above what they thought. Yep. It was eight feet. So the water came up and over those gaps. You know, parts. Yeah. So anyway, they're all rebuilding. Every municipal building got their salt shed that got flooded. So the top five, bottom five feet is silt in water still. Even this lake, I was just there today. It's a slurry mix. And uh, forty thousand yards of salt. We don't, we, they don't know if it's totally wasted or not. Gone down to Champlain, but it's not water. <laughs> It's a little saltier for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the, the uh, you know for the art studio, but well, where the town clerk's office used to be, that apparently that building has been surrounded, surrounded and destroyed, and there was thoughts of taking it down. Oh. And but then it was an excuse me, it's on the historical register. Oh. Good. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay, well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. None of that here, which is nice. Yeah, that's right. No, take a culvert once in a while. Yeah, take that's a big, right. Take that's a right. big culvert once in a while. That works. Some okay. ditching. Yeah. So, which just made me think of the, it goes with the listers, but now yeah, sharing the standard makes us look pretty good. Mm -hmm. it sure does. So, the side copy, I see oh. is another proposal. Ah, okay. Johnson voted last night to go with Usherwood Technology. The one I presented last time, Usherwood yep. Technologies okay. for, for the purchase, $4,250. And the maintenance plan was $780 per year. Okay. Yep. And we're splitting this with yeah. them? Yep. Yeah. 50 50. They were pretty adamant last night that it's residing in Johnson. Really? Oh, I didn't hear that. Yep. Why? Yeah. They fled. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I, I don't know why. I, don't, I thought it was between the two clerks, but anyway, they were, the board was assuming that it was going to be there because of, I don't know why. It was they were in bigger space when they do get renovated than our place. So. They certainly have more space. Yeah, they have yeah, tons of space yeah. compared to our place unless right. down here, I guess. Yeah, uh, Rosemary mentioned a concern of space, which is why I was going here right now. No, right now, they, they don't have. No, no, they don't right now. Right, right now, it's all scattered. No, that was yeah. before the flood, though, so she said that. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, well, the, um, anyway, the, you the, the select board <laughs> doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> the select board would find this. It's, you might want to revisit your clerks. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think with us, wherever, I don't. Oh, um, do you have a preference, Justin? Do you get a preference? I guess I don't really have a preference. I was thinking here that was the discussion we had. Right. Um, Johnson, I think, has more backlog than we do because I think we have about 11 or 12 surveys that need to go on, whereas they 
she's been doing it for, on her phone and doing like a, a scan. So, you know, doesn't make a difference. Whatever. Well, talk to them and see if you can work out. One of, those, one of the board members said, 4000 something dollars. Well, we can try this split thing, but I know Hyde Park will probably buy their own after they get tired of coming over here. That's what, that was kind of how the meeting mm -hmm. ended. Okay. <laughs> well, we, let's, we'll sell them, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. We can get you 2000 back at some point. Anyway, so everybody's what, you know. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, the clerks are really the managers of the space. So, you want know, to make sure you work a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so uh, probably need a motion to approve the scanner. Are we going to use the R1 button? I'll make, right. I'll make the motion to approve the scanner from Usherwood um, the $4,250 one with the five year extended warranty. Second. Okay. We'll use all the funds to do it. To be even better, we get down some of the minor half things. <laughs> okay. <Moving> the money. <laughs> that works well. I like this idea better and better. I'll say paying cash. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Ah. <clears throat> uh, um, Ryan, you need to explain to us why we were smart to do this next thing. <laughs> So on the under what they call it 1620, which is a FEMA provision for towns to seek assistance with their federal declaration response reimbursement administration, basically that's it. It's things that are not part of the work in the field. This is photo documentation, coding invoices, summarizing in the FEMA format, submitting it, meeting all the deadlines, et cetera. So it's 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 on the more complicated side of any kind of grant uh, application. Uh, so if you do not assign an employee to do that work, some towns, small towns, sometimes they'll lean on the regional planning commission. Uh, other towns have big, are big enough so they have two or three people that could shift their priorities and handle the flood response. We're sort of stuck in the middle of not having a lot of free staff time within our um, roster here and having a situation where Stone Shore is the consultant, you know, through the interim town administrator that did have grant administration in there. The problem is when you go to FEMA and say, we have this grant administration for this FEMA event done by a contractor, not a town employee, mm -hmm. that they want to see how the procurement was done. Did you open it up to bids? Did you select a person based on qualifications or, or cost or both? And then you submit that stuff to them. That'd be the same process that we do for an excavator that Mark might want to hire. Or buying materials so that for a large stone that maybe is available by three vendors. You don't, you have to call the three vendors. So your procurement policy that you have for Hyde Park is what FEMA relies on as to whether you're following it or not. So that's why the request for the procurement. Now, under $250,000 is a, they call it simplified procurement. They don't look for a lot of things they look for if it was over 250,000. So we're in the simplified one, which basically says towns have to follow their purchasing policy. And our policy is not really well written. I've tried to read it a few times myself. I think it's been edited too much or something, but basically it's get your quotes, document the quotes, you know, make a selection from there and have an open process. And the open process for us is advertising on Vermont Bid Registry, which is the central bid place for towns to put everything that's out to bid. And then you have a closing date, which because work is ongoing now, we, we move from emergency mode to sort of recovery mode now and processing, which is the time that FEMA doesn't have as much flexibility. The emergency response for the first week or so is they're pretty much get stuff done after that and certainly after two or three weeks they'll start to talk about your procurement policy what did you do and there is a whole list of exemptions if you want to argue that well we had to take that one person because they're the only ones in the state of Vermont that do it but you still have to prove that 
Yeah. So you can just looked, right? You can go through that kind of a discussion with FEMA, but this process here, if you want to hire a contractor for the administration of this grant, checks the procurement box. You may come in with somebody in LCPC, for example, uh, was contacted by Johnson the same way. Can't do it. We don't have staff. Johnson didn't have staff to do. They have an interim town administrator too, but limited to 20 hours a week or something. They couldn't add 20 hours, even though he's being sucked into it because of the flood. <laughs> so usually three, yes, usually like three or more responses where the MRI out in New Hampshire does this kind of work. Somebody out of Montpelier does it. You see what you get. Yeah. So here, this just makes sense to be mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're ever going to check. But again, we know we're still in 19 talking about single money. So yeah. in three years from now, when they come back and they want to question something, you yeah. have to be able to make sure that we've got, yes, this is how we went through a procurement process. So that's how Ron did the work. Instead of trying to explain it was about his retirement transitioning and just we really lose them on that one. So, yeah, yeah procurement <coughs> process. Yeah, oh, sorry. Is another way that you get denied. Yep. Sure. You can't just say, you know, this is the neighboring pit and they gave me help today. Okay, so you need a motion to be able to put these on. The state registry. Yep. And wait a week and see what you have to choose from. And then so let's authorize the chair, the vice chair, to review the responses. Yeah. The second part is do you want to come back at your next meeting or do you want to authorize somebody to pick the lowest bid, highest, you know, best qualified type person? That would be the second part. You either bring it back to a meeting or you have some authorized. So oh, I should just authorize it. Okay. I do it. <laughs> okay. Get all that, Justin. I'm Are you quoting the? the yes. Yeah, okay, cool. that. I got yes. It. Well, Second. Somebody comes well, in, does not qualify? Just to put the ten dollars an hour, and we say, "Whoa, all right." Second, take them. <laughs> it's one hundred percent reimbursable to the town if you do the procurement process. That's why it's a, that's why it's a bigger. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well, this is this is our chastity on the phone, Matt, not here. Have you guys been looking at sort of the leftover stuff and yeah. It's kind of this is kind of interesting going through now the previous and even the revised job description and all the stuff that we have pulled out. The leftover things that, that you you know looking for it for a town administrator. And um where's that paper? I don't think it was good. I printed it off. I think it's in the back. Could be a page. If it's part of the packet, it would have a page number in the bottom, right? You sent it individually. So, okay. 62. Yeah. Updated job description. Nope. Nope, you're right. That's not the one. I don't know how that got out, but we checked out. Oh, putting a development specialist right here. Yeah. Page 60. Page 60. There we go. Yeah, page 60.
and you now as we as, as we have talked before sort of a a long term plan and and again it's the I don't know what else to to call it so but different towns call it different things but basically it's it's the person that's doing all your grant writing for you and of course a large percentage of grants once you get them part of the part of the grant package is paying for you know for the person to administer the grant so you usually have to come up with some money up front but then once it sort of gets rolling rolling it's a self-funded sort of thing so we've got, and, and again, we've talked for some time, and that's one of the things that we know that that uh, Ron does well, does really well in what he's doing, and he's got a terrific background for this community in doing those sorts of things. So once we have our new town administrator, that several conversations with, with Ron and looking at and seeing how, you know, we've pulled so much off of everything that he was doing. I mean, and it sort of really started with the financial person and that we took a lot of stuff away from Kim and the treasurer as well, you know, and we put that into a, and again, she, you know, Jen is terrific. And then we got, and then we have Justin who has taken another whole bunch of stuff. And now we have Steve who has taken, and, and besides, they're not only taking duties that Ron was doing, but they're being able to put more time into. So the planning commission and the DRB actually have some staff and things really get done. And there's there's um, our, uh, our gentleman that came in who was very concerned because he wasn't getting any fill. Um, Steve got notified by the state that he is um, not Steve, but he, Draper is being investigated by the state for illegal burning and dumping. <laughs> and Steve had some when when he went out when he for the for the permit. But anyway, obviously somebody called the state to file the complaint. Mm, who's that? Draper, who was complaining about you know the town and every and not giving yeah. him dirt. The state is investigating him for what on his land? I, yep, illegal burning and dumping. Legal burning. Illegal burning. Yeah. But you know, I don't know where it came from, but they is Steve is just as the zoning person because of course he has we had asked for the dirt. It's just so anyway, they are working in that part of town now anyway, but we'll see what happens with you know with what happens. Um, but anyway, the <laughs> a little sidetrack there. The um so that that with the responsibilities that are left, and then I ask because Ron has been keeping. <laughs> so you, you have to get out your magnifying; it's much easier to read it on the computer. Um, but Ron and keeping track of, you know, for um, it's not just for billing because it could be, but thought it would be interesting. And he agreed to see what he is actually spending his time on which would help us have a much better idea of the kind of job description that we need to write. And here are the skills. I mean, everybody agrees the person needs to have some background in budgeting and financing and being comfortable with that, because that's certainly, I think for a town administrator working with a select board and with our financial person, that's gotta be the single biggest responsibility that select boards you know, face for, for their communities. But it's just kind of, again, to go, to go down and, and see how it's, um, where he is spending his time, um, how much time it is. Of course, some of it, he's still, he's still helping Jen with some, with some things because as she gets through closing up a year and then you start another. And when she starts building this next budget, you know, that'll, that's a, that's a lot to take on. So Ron will help her with that. Of course, he's spending time with Steve. Um, Krista seems to have fewer and fewer questions. She's you know, been working on, she's doing. She did her first solo payroll today. All right. She's very, uh, not without hiccups that were totally not her fault. <laughs> we had, she turned on her computer this morning and the software company had totally redesigned the website. 
without telling us. So she she opens it and said, "This doesn't look like anything that I've been training because we had her do three or yeah, four right. payrolls it's the last right. since July, preparing for this week." And she just opened that thing up and I was like, "What is that?" So she got used to it very quickly. We had one person that wasn't in the system. She was able to pull it from the archives and make the person activate it. That kind of thing. Yeah. You know, see, they see you don't know, see right away, but they're hidden. Mm -hmm. So then she activates that person. Um, but she's very, uh, very good job to get through it, it all. She had to call Jen once, I think, because okay. there was just one thing that she could uh, find. Jen's on vacation. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but that was, as far as I know, the one. That's great. It that was good. That's great. Good yeah. for yeah. her to get that yeah. done. Yeah. So I mean, sort of in, in working on two job descriptions, and I I think for the town administrator, you can probably do 32 hours a week, and that's probably going to give them plenty of time. It definitely is, with everything that we've taken off, it, it's, um, I think, and, and again, we can sort of do looking at, and it, part of that will depend on the person's experience. But we're hoping to get somebody with some experience. And so that's separate from the community development. Yep. Perfect. I thought that was supposed to be 24, 25. Oh. For town administrator? Yeah. No, I don't think we ever went that low. I think I, was, I think the original idea was could have been 24 to 32. It was never 40 and it wasn't yeah. below 24, but there's a kind of a spot in there between retirement and benefit health benefits. Yeah. You know, and maybe that's that's how we advertise it, you know, it's like. 24 to 32, depending on the on experience. I'm not I'm not sure we'll get down to that. Yeah. But in terms of thinking for budgeting, that's what you know. You know, the community development person, we relatively consistent now. We have a dozen grants that are all they don't happen one at a time. They kind of happen like this on top of each other. And little things happen like assigning a grant agreement, that kind of thing. Then it goes away for two weeks. You know, then you come back with a kickoff meeting or whatever. Uh, the, the important part that I can see is by the benefit of having two, regardless of the hours, is you have finance, which is Jen, very day-to-day -day processing, worried about the next cycle, the next quarterly, what you know, very much a annual cyclical uh, cyclical uh, process where she has deadlines and then she starts over again. You know, it's sort of like one of those jobs. So spinning off into a grant project and layering that on top is just it would be totally static. And she's been very clear; she does not want anything to do with grant. <laughs> she, 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 every time I say, "Can you do? Yeah, what do you think about it?" She just says, "No. The only thing I want from you are the coded invoices, and I'll put them in the grant binder for audit." <laughs> so that's her her role is really in making sure that anything that's been approved, processed, signed, whatever, is in a binder for that grant to sit for three years. Which is the standard uh, audit period. So that's that's limited right. role. Right. The zoning administrator, planning administrator is the same kind of thing. They they deal with the public every day. Somebody's calling, emailing, stopping by. It's very it's kind of a really in your face town position. So to take that person away, and this is one of my main problems with grant administration overlap with zoning, is you both of them were demanding from time to time and somebody was losing all the time and it ended up being a lot of times grants because those are people centric they're just you know people walking the door what's what about my shed what about my pool what about my deck so steve is very good at kind of taking all of that in and dealing with it very calmly and just processing it and I, you it's know matting mark french yeah and and kind of working through that stuff and he is settling in at 23 hours a week and he's he purposely is doing that so that he doesn't have the beamers membership issue so i'll have to go through the different parts but the two positions you're talking about now would generally be a team type thing in other words the town administrator has the direct responsibility to respond to select board high level complaints you know the town structure policies making sure things are structurally good Staff is you know, personnel reviews potentially we can start doing on a regular basis. Training, we could do more staff in house staff training, which we've kind of lost track of over the years. We used to do a little more safety training. 
even just get togethers, which Justin and Krista are kind of doing now. All that stuff takes time. It's not work work, so to speak, but it's something that somebody, which would be a town administrator, should be aware of, whether you want to call that employee morale or health, you know, those kind of things with EAP um, kind of level stuff, along with uh, the budgeting and finance and things like that, that Jen needs help. So she specifically said, Whoever you get for town administrator, they need to have some finance. They need to know what an audit is. They need to know what an audit accrual is. There's some basic stuff because that's what she has to deal with every day. And sometimes there's an issue that needs to be bounced off somebody. And that's where the town administrator kind of support would come if the town treasurer is not available or Chris is not available um, on their roles. So if the community development person is out there worried about the implementation of the select board's big ideas. Think of it like that. They're not going to be distracted by the animal bite or the rental apartment complaint. They're not going to be distracted by uh, annual reviews in June that have to be done. They're going to be focused on getting the Sterling View stormwater permit done, which I, we talk about in a second, yeah. which is a whole new project that was sort of a surprise, if you will and making sure those don't distract from other things, which they very easily could, because those those kind of projects that come up, it's like out of the blue, can take a lot of time that needs to be dealt with because the town of the permit compliance issues with that. So even if it was 10 hours a week, 12 hours a week, something regular where the town administrator could say, this project is waiting for attention. Can you put some of your time on this project? Because the select board said, it's expedited. But the town administrator might be distracted by an animal light or a regional meeting of some sort that the town would benefit from that person going to. Um, so that's it's it's more of a relationship that I can see between a a, a, a small hour per position and a more stable call it full time thirty two call it full time twenty four you know a twenty four somewhere in there, um, and they work together almost like one person could do all that together, but then you run the risk of that, that priority shifting all the time and delays of your priority. And I think I mentioned this before when we were talking about select board leadership and trying to get projects on the table and making them happen, whatever that might be. Um, that person working with the town administrator can make things happen a lot better, quicker, potentially more cost-effective, leverage more grant money, all those kind of things that go into properly planned um, projects. And you have lots of projects. If you open the town plan and look at the projects, you've probably done 10% of them. But at some point, you know, five years, six years ago, somebody thought it was a great idea that town should be moving forward in these directions. Nobody pulls out that town plan and says, where are we at and all this stuff? But by the way, next year, your eight-year plan starts to expire. And you get a chance to revisit it again, 24. So some of it happens by osmosis. Like if you actually went page by page, you'd find some things were accomplished, even though you didn't know they were set in motion five years ago. They just happen. Other ones you're like, damn, we spent a lot of time getting that in the town plan. We didn't spend a month on it. That's where your community development person would come in and say, what are your priorities, board? Every every town meeting day, you have to get new members, you have your organizational meeting in March. And you say, what do we want to do this year? You actually could say, we want to do these top three projects by the time we're here next March and delegate that to your two people and get regular reports. I think that's the other important part. You know, I give you the monthly kind of snapshot of grants or your task list, but that's not as good as the last month we were able to secure easements and move forward to the next project and, 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 and be, be uh, a little more complicated about it. Well, and I think in, and in looking for the town administrator, all the day-to-day -day practical things are what's important. Those are the skills we need to find in a person. And when we find somebody that's really good, and if over time they're interested in doing more grants, expanding the work they do, that would that would be terrific, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but if they, you know, again, I think the, the focus needs to be on the day-to-day -day and the financial and the, all that stuff. We've we've become as a town really 
um, really good at getting grants and it uh, allows us to do a lot of things that if we the taxpayers could not foot the bill for. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't want to I don't want us to lose that capacity. And and again, Ron has the skills and can you know it's also one of those things that they're in Florida for two months. You can do it in Florida for two months. That's a great thing about grants. <clears throat> um, so I, I, again, if you just if you the that's page sixty four the or the third of the previous the list of the duties and responsibilities. You look at the and you go through that and you see the things basically now from the town administrator you can take off of there because we've got other people doing them. We have a brilliant updater of the town websites now, right? <laughs> and, a <Facebook. laughs> and a Facebook page and all those things. You know, he's no longer the zoning administrator. You know, the um, again, and you take out there. There are some there are some grants I think would stay with the town administrator, like the the yearly highway stuff that is just work with the highway on that. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's just a regular. There isn't anything new and different about that. That's just how the state gives us gives us the money. But sort of taking the high and safe between now and the next meeting, go through and look at that list and what you can get rid of it. And then I think we sort of end up with a okay, here's here are the duties and responsibilities that we're looking for in a town administrator. And as I say, I just thought it was feel you have to go home and get out your magnifying class or let's send it to you so you can see it on your on your computer. But seeing what is what is time goes into. Interesting. Got any thoughts? And don't we need? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and don't we need to talk more about like the road foreman, road commissioner type thing too? Yes. Because that's part of the town administrator's job now. And well, yeah, but sort of in reality, if is or there isn't, how do we do it? We, was it last meeting we talked about it? Yeah. A little bit, and then we said we'd talk more about it. Right, right. Um, and maybe and if we want to keep that. Well, and wait, and of course, we don't, we don't have Matt tonight either. True, true. You know, but, but to, um, to put this fairly high up, hopefully on the list next meeting, everybody go through these and talk about it earlier in the meeting. Yeah, sure. I think it's just easier to have those conversations when we're all in the room. Yeah, I agree. Um, Want to throw anything else in right now? Is it raining there in Hyde Park? If it is, it's just kind of, it's just kind of drizzly. God, I kept pouring down torrential rain on this drive. It's awful. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. I'm hoping just, it's going to let up. Yeah, that's that's right. You're coming up from Boston, and this is most of the rain yeah. is being south of Route 2. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm in Bethel. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to hope for it. Okay. Yeah, it should start getting better pretty soon. <laughs> I hope so. Um, okay. How about the minutes? <clears throat> to approve the minutes from 725. Second. Yep. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay. Anybody abstaining? All right. <laughs> Second. Any warrants? One blue pack. I Did I swing by and sign those tomorrow? Sure. Okay, I can do that. I mean, I looked at them briefly online, so I can certainly approve them, but I'll stop by and sign them tomorrow. Um, it's Mark's there, okay. Okay, now you give it to me, Ron. I know, it's a little sneaky thing. Um, Tessie, do you want to sign the errors and omission tomorrow when you're here as well? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Great. I'm glad you said that's one number two. Okay. It's not that in there. Um, 
Yeah, it really good. <laughs> Okay, here's Karen. Uh, the uh because uh, because Mark's online, I told him he didn't need to bother to come. The uh the truck, the single axle. Um it doesn't have well, Mark, you want to chime in? No, he's just gonna stay on mute. He's not listening. <laughs> So basically, he doesn't. He, there he is. Susan. Yeah, gotcha. I'm here. Okay, so well, I was just saying you haven't you haven't gotten any any other quotes. Um, no, I was supposed to get well. Freightliner was in Western Star was supposed to get pricing not last Friday, Friday before. I talked to them last week. They still haven't got all their pricing. I've got nothing back from them yet. I did talk to Dan Saint here today because he gave me a to the 30th price and he would stand behind his price on his truck so i don't know how long till we can get a price i just know that a lot of slots are filling up prior to getting built for next year but i don't know i can't say we can or we can't i know danny has promised me a slot for next year if we sign but i don't know about freightliner because i haven't really gotten anything back to You say Western Star will guarantee you a spot for next year? No, West, no, International will promise me a slot. International, uh, Western Star and Freightliner have not gotten back to me with a price. Okay. So do we? Should we really keep waiting on that, or should we move along? Yeah, this I'm wondering. I can't. I can't. I can't believe anybody's going to come in particularly cheaper. You know. Um, we're talking about um, two things out there, timing wise. One is the truck that Dan provided the quote on was 2025. So everybody that's getting these orders together is waiting for their other parts and pieces because we're so far ahead of that year. The problem is the build time is 18 months. So they're sort of guessing a little bit until they can get the best number, which international provided the other providers haven't quite got their pencil sharpened yet because it's on the early side uh, the uh, you know the timing of the bill the or you know, order placement those all those mechanical things i can't think of one pressing reason to accelerate the purchase in the sense of it's it's going to be the same condition for the whole month of august I don't, and October it is September, October might be when the state bids are done uh, for these other vendors. So we can have a state bid comparison. You know, there's things that are just early, I guess is what I'm saying, compared to October, November, December, when all the orders are going to go in. And that's what Mark is saying. Eventually the slots fill up and then you could get pushed a whole year if you don't. So it's, I don't know, every, every, every purchase seems like a little gamble these days yeah. Yeah. to a certain degree. You're they guessing with little gambles. You're, you're, yeah, you're guessing with three hundred thousand dollars and half the information you think you need. You'd hate to wait a couple more months and it go up. Well, it wasn't well, before, lot, but you know what I mean. Well, how how long we lose a thought, right? Yeah, how long will they hold it for us? You know, he's saying he's holding, but he can, and again, but then the slots fill, and then we're right. then definitely going to cost us more. Yeah. So I don't, Rolly. I know you, you're. You're still, I am too, stunned at the cost of a truck, but <clears throat> that just shows our age. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Should we should we go ahead and say, oh yeah, get in get in this line at this price? And well, Mark and I talked today, and I'm still in line of tandem, but you're twenty thousand dollars more. He don't want to tandem, so I'm not the one that's driving the goddamn thing. No, right, right. So I guess what I would do when we talked about it is that we would keep the truck he's got, get rid of that other tandem, get the new six-wheel done, 
And that way, the six, the one he's got now could be a spare truck and he could use it with the chloride tank put in the back of this yep. dump truck. Do his chloride and then, and then in the wintertime, if they need something, they can jump in that for a spare truck. They have it, right. Just, you know, the way things break down, but you're not gonna be able to keep this other tandem. I mean, something's gonna have to happen. Yeah, right. Comes time to advertise it again, you know, get rid of that one. You should have the, he said the, the other one went into, um, down there to um, Viking. Viking and it's, it's being worked on now. So they should have that back in maybe a month. And then put the other one on the list again to <clears throat> see if we can get rid of it. Right. And then keep, right. you know, it, either that or I don't know. They're not giving you nothing for trade ins. No. No. They don't Compared to what they're getting for new goddamn truck. I know. It. I 293,000. I mean, is there things that we could cut in here a little bit? I mean, Jesus. Okay. So a to, six wheel dump truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ron's right. Maybe we ought to so, five fifties. <laughs> right. It's a big pickup. Yeah, right. Yeah. For half the price. <laughs> well, should we should do you think there are going to be any quotes that are going to be significantly different, or we just go ahead and do this? Do it, I guess. I mean Rolly, uh, what? Yeah, go ahead. What were you? Yeah, sorry. Um, so, Rolly, you're kind of saying changing the rotation of the trucks a little bit when you're saying keep the tandem. Mark and I talked today. And, yeah. And keep the truck that he runs now a six wheel dump. Okay. And the tandem that we were supposed to trade in last year, that still should go and get out of here. And right. then that way, the one he's got now, he could use for a chloride Other truck, stuff. he could use for a spare okay. plow truck in the winter. You know, got it's it. nice okay. to have a spare truck. Yeah. Even if yeah, you yeah. don't run it. Okay. Right. Hey, Mark, and like you say, when we're not getting anything for trade and if it's still in great condition. That tandem, yeah. you could put it back on the list and who knows, somebody might need a plow truck for this winter. I mean, they were only going to yes. give us, yep. I think, 30 for it. Right. So, Mark. But I'd say, depending on what they give you for, I mean, I, I won't give the damn thing away by no means, but absolutely. But either one of them, I mean, I wouldn't. Only offered us 30 for it, right? For trade in? Uh, I think it was almost 40, if I remember correctly, I think. But like I said, you can't buy a Toyota Tacoma for that. So it's hard to get yeah. rid of it for, to give it away. Right. But again, that's something we can talk about down the road anyway, right? Like uh, one potential right. changing. Okay. Uh, one reason you know that you look towards leasing is because you're not getting any trade. Yeah, right. So is it time to really shuffle up the whole deck of trucks and try to figure out how to do that? Yeah. Because if you're not going to keep the truck and you know the warranties are going to fail and the whole thing falls apart and you're not getting a trade at 10% or somewhere re residual value, you might as well lease the stupid thing. It's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know about that. We haven't seen. I, I don't know how the leasing goes. You pay well. You obviously we pay cash now, so you're going to pay more in interest. You match the right. full, you match the warranty to get rid of it at the end, and you just buy another lease. You know, you don't you don't have that residual to help. We used to get a lot of but money. Ron, you still have you still have all the body costs. So the lease is, I think, the cabin. I don't I don't know if that's the body and the plow and the wing and the sander. I think there's a we got to look at that a little closer. I think yeah, no, we haven't even looked at it yet. I'm just saying if, if you get to the point where the truck's so expensive, you're not getting anything after six years, you let somebody else take that loss, not the town taxpayers. I know Hardwood. Yeah. Hardwood, when I left Marshall there, 
Hardwick was, um, he had it on rotation of five years. His warranty was up five years. No, but you, you reduce your life cycle on a lease to five or six. Right. And you always have new right. low maintenance vehicles and you're done. You Dumb, done. Okay, but I don't, we're not going to do that right now. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think. No, but definitely, I think that's definitely something to look at. There's a lot yeah. of parts to switch over. Right, right. But like purchasing but things like that. What we should just do now is go ahead and order this truck, but then take the yeah. next year to start looking at working and and looking at coming up with a plan for here's how you transition to leasing everything, if that's what makes sense, which sounds like I may well make it. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the lease is, is no more. No, I would the way you do that is you get a town that's already done it to come in and talk with you. Yeah. That'd be the first yeah, thing. Right. So I don't know how it works. A couple of towns have done it, but I don't. But it seems so that um, Danny St. Cyr could run that through. He's offered lease deals with us five, yeah. four or five years ago. I know he does it. He's got a whole purchase price and you know the whole truck. I mean, he, he buys he the would, whole. He at would, that time, <laughs> Allegiant may have a different deal, but yeah. when it was Clark's, they'd buy the whole truck. He would probably listen. come right to a meeting and with all of us here and explain it to us. I'd still want the practical foreman that's done it too. You know, versus, yeah, yeah, right. Or versus only the sales. I do both of them. Right, right. But I don't think that's anything we want to begin putting no, on the year now. Right. No, right. it's a year long type. It's a year process. long thing. With a new time. So how about the investment? <laughs> See, sale comp, you know, hours just get filled up. When it's in. Well, in the way, how long it takes us to make decisions, we might want to start thinking about it now. <laughs> Sometimes it takes us a while to decide on it. You are talking $293,000. Yeah. Oh, Conversation. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. So do we want to wait and see if there are more bids or will let's just go ahead and do it? I guess that's up to the rest of you. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I'm asking. Chastity? Savannah, what do you I, think? Yeah, I don't think we should keep gambling. I don't I don't know. Jesus. It is such a gamble. I'm just afraid that if we keep waiting, we are going to lose a spot. And then are we going to have to wait another year to get a truck? I can't believe and anybody else gonna... like a, an amazing $100,000 cheaper truck out there that they're going to, or everybody right. would have gone and done that. They probably would have, but the way that International was clamped down up here with no International yeah. competitor. Mm -hmm. You know, can you get one yeah, right. down to Connecticut, Pennsylvania? Can you get one? Yeah, you probably can. And you're probably absolutely right. But then it's going to be hard to get the dealers to warranty it. Yeah, yes, that's right. You're right. You get the service right. and everything. Oh, so, true. I mean, it's like it's contractors. <laughs> Rolling? Yeah. Yeah, Mark. So the so international or Freightliner or Western Star is all cabin chassis. International sure. has gone from Ryan's truck in 2019 to Mike's truck to Mike. Mm -hmm. They're all about exactly the same. The increase is more in the body on this truck than it is the cabin chassis. So it's not really international. It's not Freightliner and it's not Western Star. It's the body, the plow, mm -hmm. the wing, the computer, that gear is more on this and the actual the cabin chassis so when we buy a truck we buy a cabin chassis that's international freight line or whatever that's just a cabin frame we take it to well roll knows this i'm just telling him stuff he already knows but we take it to viking or fairfields or whatever which all of our vendors have left the state of vermont now and we're pretty much just left with viking wow. the increase is more in viking one increase is the brine tank, so I don't got to come back three times and load up a salt brine. I can keep going on the route. That is a little bit more. That was the $2,800 increase on it to go from up to a 600 gallon tank, which we can try to pre treat. We have never done that because we never had the volume to do that with. Can we save more? I hope so. I think so. In our salt budget, I'm about 100% we can. It's just, I won't say it till I do it to. And probably not the first year, maybe the second year, you know, everything's a learning curve for us for sure. 
but a lot of the price increase is in our body, not the cabin chassis. I got to say that compared to, I looked at all of our trucks going up through, like the increase is pretty straightforward, the same going up through. Besides, uh, those were tandems and it's in a single axle, but the only thing you're really talking a little bit more of a frame and a little bit more of a, another axle and four tires. But I just want to put that out there. It's really not the cabin chassis, if you look at it, it's more the body that's in the plow and the wing and everything else that's increased the price. Yeah, well, Mark, I think the only problem with that is the way Allegiant markets themselves. That when they were Clarks, they used to sell the complete truck and they'd go down to Viking with their chassis, bring back all the finished truck to sell to towns. Now they're partitioning it out. No, no, that's not, no, that's false, actually, Ron. We did buy some all set up. That were those were stock trucks. We're not buying a stock truck. We spec a truck. So we our HX was a stock truck, which you are 100 percent correct. That's how that one was. As Roland can vouch for this, because I don't I know Roland. I don't think you ever bought a stock truck, did you? He's sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> Roland, wake up. <laughs> I'm still thinking of this. He's thinking. <laughs> the stock trucks. So you can buy a stock truck. So the HX, we got a deal on, we bought that. That was a stock truck. Brian's truck. I always I went out and got it. Yeah. Somebody that I and worked I think, with didn't like the state bids. So they went out and made me get bids. Yeah. I think it was just because they wanted me to do more work. But there's <laughs> there's different ways of going about it. Ron is correct. There is stock trucks, but they don't have any stock trucks now. That's the, the thing over the past. For right now, because there's such a demand for trucks. Supposedly, you make more money with this. Yeah, it's all custom built. Yeah. Just having a hard time. Two hundred ninety-three thousand nine hundred eighty-four dollars. <laughs> well, you you wouldn't have a hard time if there was three. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what. You, yeah. You're saying the same thing. It's like if I had three quotes in front of me, I'd make a decision. Making well, no, I think well, none of them are going to be a lot cheaper. Than no, no, but the more. problem is they're not in front of you right now, right? Exactly, if, if, yeah. if you, I feel yeah. the same, correct. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. well, then okay. Mark, that's what I had to do. I had to go out and right. get three prices, but not because somebody, please, Mark, the Mark, do the other folks have any get three quotes have three. any guesstimate as to when they'll have quotes? No, I well, last uh, two Fridays ago, and I haven't got it yet. But that, but even with a cabin chassis quote, you're still, you're going to be neck to neck with all of them. Okay. Where are you going to go for your body quote? Because I don't really want to go all the way down Southern New Hampshire and deal with these guys that are charging me outrageous. I had a, a bed chain go on my truck uh, two years ago and we waited a month okay. and a half okay. to get it. In okay. To my Mark, I'm going to make a motion. Yeah. I'm going to get the truck. <laughs> you just told them. Oh. Make a motion. Is it because what I'm talking about. Order of the truck. Okay, need a second. I'll second. <laughs> I think everyone feels. I know. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I want to buy it. Okay. Ah. Oh, well, and and I think part of it is you know it's it's they've got a monopoly and and you you know yeah. that's that's kind of the problem. I'm going to Attorney General's office. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. You know, I, I just yeah. We can't. We select boards cannot be put in this position every darn truck purchase. Yeah, you think of how many. I know. In two years. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same routine. So we order the truck. Maybe it ain't going to cost us no money, and then we'll look into that. Yeah, and we can have a penalty if we get out of it. Yeah, yeah it's least. cheaper than two ninety three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, right. that's so, another okay. approach. We've hired yeah, lawyers. There you go. We've hired lawyers for smaller things than that. Yeah, that's that's just <laughs> that's a good point, Rolly. Good point. <laughs> order the truck. Okay, Do it. Order, okay. Give <laughs> give Mark. You know we save a lot of time. Give Mark authority now to buy the next truck tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what, whatever Dan um, Sears wrote, whatever Dan throws at him, have Mark authorized to sign it. If we don't like it after a couple months, we'll we'll talk to the town attorney. Okay. That's right. We'll send it back. That's the lady. Oh, God. Right. Life is not easy. It's actually deteriorating. Uh, I, I, it's, yeah. it's not even three hours in. Yet. I don't. I, I, just can't, I just can't. 
I know. I don't. I, you have to help us, Billy. That's okay. Um, all in favor, say. It, it is the helpless feeling here. Yeah, it is. All in favor, Sorry, say. Susan. say yeah. Aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and do it. And if something amazing comes in and there's a penalty for backing out of this one, we'll do it. Mark, um, to clarify, can you state like the year make a model of what truck you're thinking of getting rid of and swapping and right. or rolling? Right, right, it's right at the bottom. Of the one he's getting rid of. The one he's getting rid of yeah. will be that. Mike's, Mike's truck. 2015 tandem is what we have right now for a spare truck, kind of, because they didn't offer us nothing for it. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a 2015 too. If we have a 2015 tandem, 2015 single, the single I wanted to keep for a chloride truck. Identify for the 2015 tandem to replace the 2025. Okay. Or, but I think you got to look into the Attorney General. And see what we can it dig up on. Yeah. I think talk to you first. Big corporations get in trouble when you disadvantage competition. Right. But the uh, check of the League of Cities and Towns, because we aren't the only town running into this. Everybody's running into it. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say that. I mean, everyone else must feel this way in, in the town. Yeah. So maybe check in. Well, let's check in with the League of Cities and Towns and see if they've done any research or they've thought about it or is it an issue. And for them to find out if it is and say, okay, because if, if the League of Cities and Towns representing a group of towns went to the Attorney just, General, just you'd pay a lot more attention. Fairfield, fair, right? He was moved out of the area. Vikings jumping on yeah. board, and and Clark's is sold, and JB's is gone, and yeah, so, you know, the market has changed a lot. What about? What about Mac? Where's is, does uh, Mac truck uh, sell anything around? Don't even want to go there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Mac, Mac's not Mac no more, anything. Bobo, oh, okay. Okay. Bobo Mac. Uh, got oh. it. Got it. Got it. You don't want to go there. Ah, because okay. I, can you, I can tell you the price of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, way too much. Well, if it's Volvo, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, is that like the be, yeah, three, three times as much as anything else. Oh, no, do you want to look at a okay. Peterbilt? What's that? <laughs> you want me to look at a Peterbilt? Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just made a motion for this one. Don't try a Peterbilt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was funny. Yeah, I think what we got is uh, winter salt. <laughs> went up a little. Yeah, went up a little. Comparative quotes are okay. 89 38 a ton now. No, that no. was last year. That's last year. No. That was last year. Oh, 20, yeah, 95 60. So we usually will compass is always always for setting us a renewal because we've been doing that for three, five years now, Mark. I don't know, with Compass. Um, and then three, it's, uh, yeah. we're three years of, let's be the fourth year, I think. Fourth year. So we usually wait another couple weeks and then the state will start to release their bid just for comparison, even though they don't include towns anymore. They stopped that two years ago. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, Mark has called around to Cargill before, just for comparison. I think those are the only two that will even get close to Lamoille County, um, and they've been higher. So we stayed with Compass. Compass quality, I think, has been okay. Their responsiveness to delivery time has been okay still, Mark. Their quality of their service is over the top. I can't speak more highly. I can't. I was so scared when we switched to them, but I cannot speak more highly of them. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then Cargo would be the only other supplier. Is that true out of Shelburne or wherever they come from? Yep. Well, they capitalized on that because they bought out Dubois. Dubois and Barrett's are the only ones that did sell. And there's no more Dubois. Compass will start doing the same. Just like everything else, Roland, we have nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah single stream <laughs> parts and pieces. Yep. At whatever price they want to charge. McDonald's is in there somewhere. I hope he's listening. But, uh, McDonald's bought out the the trucking business, right? Yeah, I think that's where he went. 
Let's check. So we're two weeks. Yeah, we can okay. we can talk in two weeks on salt. On salt, right? It's just a little thing. bit of time on that, but eventually they're going to say the same thing. It's going to be know, our deliveries are filling up. Are you going to sign that? But mm -hmm. yeah. So next, so you want salt or not? put that on the next agenda as an okay. action item for the winter salt. Okay. Yeah, it is only August. <laughs> it's, it doesn't feel like it when you start to look at the calendar. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Oh, did you do the warrants? Oh, we need a motion. Yeah, we signed them, but we didn't. Need a motion to approve the warrants? So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Stating? Okay. Now, Susan? Yeah. Did I get permission to sign or no? Yeah. Yeah. Was that voted? It was voted. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. Yeah. You're making sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm always going for the lawyer. You guys are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep, you're all set. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> Let's see. That's it. Anything else? You get to go home? Oh. I know. Well, put one on the phone and lose that one. And look at that. We're out of here. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I'm not, I hope I'm going to check. But somebody hears how it's, I'm sure, is sure they'll fix this and fine, but it can be. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Right. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay.